Welcome back, Canaanites. Yesterday saw the announcement for a major Halo Wars 2 expansion titled Awakening the Nightmare. Early in the day, details had leaked via Dan Ayub about a new firefight mode featuring the Flood, but I don't think anyone was fully prepared for what we saw. Coming in fall of this year alongside the aforementioned firefight mode is a new campaign expansion in which we get to play the Banished as they fight against the Flood. Before we get into further details, let's break down the announcement trailer. The trailer opens, basically giving away the twist as we see the Halo Wars 2 logo surrounded by a sickly green, evocative of the Flood for any Halo fan. We then see a trio of brutes entering a structure. Interestingly, as pointed out by Hidden Xperia in his own breakdown, the entrance features a lot of curves, much more reminiscent of Covenant architecture than Forerunner. I have to wonder then, is it some remnant of High Charity? We know its remains were still around on the Ark as of 2555, and its ultimate fate in the wake of the Ark's repair remains unstated, so perhaps something of it survived. It's also possible this is a Covenant ship that crashed during the Battle of 2552, or maybe even a section of Enduring Conviction. We'll have to see. It's entirely possible too that this is indeed a Forerunner structure of some kind, just with more curved architecture than we're traditionally used to. Interior shots from later in the trailer show yellow lights, which are much more Forerunner than Covenant, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Moving on, in the background as the Brutes enter, we can see a dead forest, and in the foreground the classic sickly green floodish atmosphere. This would seem to indicate that the Flood have taken over in some manner, possibly even having converted the local biome. As the Brutes continue inside, we get our first look at a Flood infection form. We then cut to the form charging the Brutes, only to be killed by a spike around. During this, we get a beautiful up-close look at the Banished Spiker, something I really need more information on. Wink wink, Grim. Interestingly, the infection form doesn't pop like we see in the games when it's shot, it just gets pinned to the nearby wall. And speaking of, I have to give some serious credit to Blur for this, as it shows the infection form slowly dying, its various legs suddenly twitching in the back of its head, dropping. Beautiful animation work. We then get this big room shot I mentioned earlier, with Atriox voicing over, saying, I told you not to go inside. Whether that means Atriox knew about the Flood, or merely suspected it might still be there is anyone's guess, but looking at the room, it's hard to say if this is Covenant or Forerunner. The room does look gray with yellow lights, which would be more indicative of Forerunner, but as mentioned earlier, the entrance and even some of the architecture seen here features a lot of curves more reminiscent of Covey architecture. We then get a brilliant shot of this brute frozen with fear, dropping his spiker as we hear that classic flood scream in the background. We cut to black and you can hear some extremely visceral sound effects of the brutes being infected. It's absolutely glorious. Finally, we see the newly infected brute and Damn, does it look good. Interestingly, it looks like the infection form is a little higher up than what we see in the shooters, on the head rather than sticking out of the chest. It shares an interesting similarity with the infected Spartan seen in Halo 2 Anniversary. And after that, the trailer comes to an end, and damn, what a trailer it was. Now that we got the trailer taken care of, let's talk about a couple canonical details, notably how the Flood are still around. According to Halo Waypoint, the Flood seen here are survivors of the firing of Installation 04B, so to speak. Now, if you're wondering how that's possible, remember what Cortana said in Halo CE. Halo doesn't kill Flood, it kills their food. Humans, Covenant, whatever. We're all equally edible. The only way to stop the Flood is to starve them to death. Now, this doesn't mean that the Flood are actually immune to the Halo effect. Combat and carrier forms, pure forms, basically anything that has any sort of nervous system, will die. However, stuff like Flood Spores, with the lack of any developed nervous system, will remain alive. Without any food source, though, they will effectively starve to death over a period of time. So, it seems that the period of time wasn't long enough between Halo 3 and Halo Wars 2. Why the Flood remained in hiding all this time is something of a mystery, but hopefully we'll find out during the campaign. Story-wise, the campaign takes place a few months after the main Halo Wars 2 campaign, so it's not set in the past, the story is continuing forward. One thing people have been wondering about is whether any sort of grave mind is present during this. Interestingly, the gameplay that we have seen so far does feature the Flood Juggernaut, a cut pure form from Halo 2. Now, assuming the Juggernaut seen in Awakening the Nightmare is still a pure form, there must be some kind of grave mind around, cause pure forms, as you may know, need to be made by a grave mind. 
Grave mines are also somewhat necessary for any sort of intelligent coordinated flood attack, as prior to the formation of a grave mine, the flood basically work on instinct. And that's the breakdown of the trailer and a couple of the more interesting canon facts. Later this week, I'll put together a What We Know video covering all the known canon and story details, gameplay features, leaders, new units, etc, etc. And be sure to tune into Xbox Daily on Wednesday for more details on this expansion. Until then, you can check out the Waypoint article I mentioned earlier, which is linked in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown, and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you.